good? Yeah, I should be good. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Uh, we are our brothers from Great Millstone. I'm Nathaniel from GMS Camp Atlantic. I'm Bathamayum, GMS Houston. All right, and uh, before we get started, as always, we want to give all praise glory and honor to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, the Kakadash. Also, double honors to our elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, rule and teach well. Peace, love, salutations, and many blessings to those that are doing this work in truth and sincerity. And, and you know, we just want to do a continuation from when we went in at camp. We was going into how the things in this world are temporary. You know, um, everything in this world, as we see, is falling apart. Your highs are temporary. Your lows are temporary. You know, everything is temporal. And what we're looking for is we're looking for a place where our high, when we get, when we, when we're on our highs, we stay high. We never come back down. And that's the kingdom of heaven. That's what we're looking forward to. So I have a quick precept, unless you have some, brother. You got it, brother. Um, this is Second Corinthians four and eighteen, and it says, "While we look not at the things that which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are, which the things which the things that are are seen are slacking. For things which are seen are temporal, but things which are not seen are eternal." And that's talking about Yahweh Shemi Hawashai and the eternal things that He created. And I'm give you some examples like honor. You can't see that integrity. You can't see that dignity you can't see that you can't see balance okay you can't see morality you can't see godliness those are the things that are very valuable that you cannot see but without those things the world lies in chaos you got it bro uh temporal in etymology online late 14th century is an adjective worldly secular of or pertaining to the the present life so that was the main point i wanted to get of or pertaining to the present life so things on this side, it, like we were going to in Kim, Second uh, Peter chapter three verse ten. These things are going to be melted. The elements are going to be melted with fervent heat. Mm -hmm. So hey, what's going to happen? <laughs> You're going to be melted, but that's going to be you know when that the utter destruction comes. But these things have to pass away because wickedness can't thrive forever. That's right. And I got another precept. Um... One sec. No, you good. But yeah, <clears throat> yeah, wickedness can't can't thrive. Like we were mentioning earlier, they got the elders in Dallas. They always go into, you know, the earth needs new management. Hey, w once the earth has new management, then righteousness is gonna dwell forever, for all eternity. Right. And that's what we're hastening for. We, we're hastening to to dwell in righteous rulership. All right. So uh, uh, this is Second uh, Peter three, and I'm gonna start at verse ten. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So we got people out here asleep. You know, they don't understand what's going on. I mentioned it to the brothers. We went to go grab some food real quick. And on TV, I see NBA stuff. You know, NBA playoffs is on. They just had the WNBA draft. It's a lot going on. A lot of bread and circus. You know, Esau Eden was several things. White man, he wants to keep you distracted. Keep you from distracting from World War Three. You got it, huh? I was going to say, not to mention, too, the scriptures say the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. Come. Now, the thing about a thief, do you expect the thief to come? No, no, no. You don't know when he's going to come. You don't know when he's going to come, you know? And I like to bring up, too, about being a thief. A lot of break-ins, you know, or, or I'll say robberies happen when? At night. At night, yeah. When it's darkness. <laughs> mm -hmm. They do it under the cover of darkness. Come. You got it. You know? I'm going to continue on, and it says, in in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works therein shall be burned up and that's talking about when these thermonuclear missiles hit now you can't deny that the thermonuclear missiles aren't going to hit anymore because where are we are where are we right now yeah. we're on the cusp of world war three we know that world war three is around the corner and we know that world war three is going to be fought with thermonuclear missiles there's no if ands buts about that okay well, Revelation 11 and 14 said the second woe is past and the third woe come quickly. That's right. Woe is death, destruction, mourning, and sorrow. Those are things that happen during war. Mm -hmm. uh, Ecclesiastes 3, understanding the times that we're in. It's a time of judgment. It's a time of war. I believe it's uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and 8. Hey, we're, we're living in a time of war. As we say, well, as the scriptures say, Salakia, uh, Matthew 24 and 6 through 8. Hey. These are the beginning of sorrows, but hey, it's going to be nation against nation. 
you know, et cetera, et cetera. But hey, war is, is, is a key point. Uh, I like when the elders always say, in order to have peace, you must have war. That's right. And war, and the thing is, and what did Yahweh Shai say? He said, I did not come to make peace. I came to bring a sword. That's right. So he's at war with this place. The scriptures talk about how the Lord is not going to meet you as a man. But I'm going to continue on with the scripture. It says, uh, uh, so so the, everything in this world is going to be burned up. When it says the heavens shall roll together as a scroll. Um, the, I'm sorry, what it talks about the, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. It's talking about those thermonuclear missiles hitting and just frying everything up. Mainly here in Babylon the Great or, or the virgin daughter of Babylon. Mm -hmm. This place is going to finally be penetrated. And once it's penetrated, hey... It's, it's literally <laughs> fucked. It's going to be blue eyes. Yeah, come because it's going to be literally <laughs> laid desolate. For real. Only, only desert-like creatures are going to lay here, are going to dwell here. That's right. Um, verse 11, it says, Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversations and godliness? So the Lord is saying, and this shit about to go away, man. You know? And the thing is, is that when you really think about it, this book really wasn't unlocked until... Abba Vippens came on on the scene where where Yahweh Shai broke broke the seals so this book can be broken down the way that it's supposed to, you know, and we get the true understanding of these scriptures, right? Because these things were never brought out when I was in the Christian church, Love you know God. what I'm saying? Which I wasn't really in there like that. I was on the on the, I was on the search for the truth, but and that was a that yeah, was a stop. That was a they that wasn't bringing us that, 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 that was a that was a that was a pit stop to know oh, this ain't it right here. You God. know what I'm saying? And uh, but they don't teach you that this world is going to be destroyed and and all of these things are going to pass away so you know we need to be looking to yahweh bashim yahweh shai in these times and not to our own strength because this shit is about to go any day now yeah you know? but they they like we mentioned on the on, on the blog too you know these people especially our people the two-thirds of our nation the nation of israel they don't believe that there's anything better. They believe that they're living their best life on this side. That's right. When you're actually living, this is the worst life ever. Mm. You know, you can't even ask someone the definition of what a woman is. Like, that's how low of a, a state. This is the, the valley the, the valley of, of the dry bones. Of shadow of death. That, that too. Yeah, the valley of the dry, dry bones. bones. The valley like, of the shadow of death. <laughs> this place is through, man. What is a woman? Oh, I really can't tell you what the woman is. Why can't you fucking tell me what the woman is, man? Through, through SA, not USA. Through SA. You know, <laughs> like for 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 you, I'm I'm 43 years old and I've always known what a woman was. You can look at a one and tell oh, that's a woman right there. But now all of a sudden, the definition of a woman is gone. This place is through. That's why everything needs to be dissolved. You know, I'm gonna read verse 12 and then we'll move on. It says, "Looking for and hastening onto the coming of the day of Yahweh." Where in the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And that's what we need. We need all of this shit to go away, man. We need all of this stuff to go away. We need all of these things to disappear because this place is wicked. You know, let me, I'm gonna get another a precept unless you have something. Come on, now you grab a precept, but let me bring this out. We talked about that before, Kim. Uh, fire is a cleansing agent. This this place needs to be, needs to be cleansed because it's. Exceeding polluted <laughs> It's exceedingly polluted mm -hmm. You know Starting with Esau Eden The self-proclaimed white man Then you have the heathens That follow suit But then also The two-thirds of our nation You know Who are joined on To the wicked Thinking that their That Esau Edom Is their salvation And they have to be Burnt up too You're going to get The same judgment As Esau Edom is Well that's why The scripture said That you are of your father The devil uh -huh. You know Because Y'all follow after this nigga Just like y'all Wicked ass women out here Y'all been convinced that it's okay for you to just up and leave your man and take your children away and destroy your home. And because you have the ability to hop on a new cock, you know, and start a, start a new, for some reason, that's okay for you to do that. You know, because Esau says, well, you know what? You don't have to listen to this nigga's authority. You can do whatever the hell you want. Not realizing all the lies that you're destroying in the process of making that decision. It shows you how upside down this place is to where you can make that type of decision and not even think about the repercussions or even... Or, or the repercussions won't even affect you. You're benefiting from your evil. That's right. And that's what it was, was happening here in Babylon. But I'm a, uh, if this uh, ever pop up, here it is right here. This is Micah 2 and 10. Mm -hmm. And it reads, if it pops up, there it is. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. <laughs> Very polluted. Hey, uh, the, the air is polluted, the water, the land. 
Hey, our females are polluted. I don't even like calling them women. It's our females because a woman is an adult female, a female servant. They're not doing any service, you know, for the for the men of our nation. Mm-hmm. No, they're not doing any service for the men of our nation. They're doing our men a disservice. That's right. What they're doing is is they're having babies and then not allowing the men that those babies are from to raise their children. And then they're going out and having babies from different men, the father not only themselves, but the father the children that are coming from that are coming from within them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That causes a lot of confusion. This is Babylon the Great. This is the land of confusion. You know, it's it's confusing, you know, to be around a uh a end up or a nigga woman. And uh, you got the kids, but you're not the dad. Like, you know, as a kid, that, that'll bug you out. Like, where's my dad? Who is this random guy that's just coming in all, all you know, manners of the night? Late, late night creep, as they say. And then you hear the noise of what's going on in the room. Come on, now. You know, and you're like, man, what the hell is going on in there? You're listening to the door. Like, what is he doing to my mommy? And then you <laughs> learn later on, oh, yeah, he was he was just doing what dudes do. Yeah. You know? And he don't want to be with you like that because you got kids. But y'all stupid-ass women, you know, y'all don't... Y'all don't realize that. Y'all think because a man wants a mask that he wants you. No. He just wants what's in between your legs to satisfy you, satisfy himself. Once that's done, the nigga just pass you along. And we're men of the Lord and we're telling you this. You know what I'm saying? We're men of the Lord and we're telling you this is what it is. So th- what, what the hell you think a normal nigga, a, a nigga, a, he's already thinking in his head, fuck that bitch. Uh, uh, forgive me for my French, but he's already thinking that. But I'm going to continue on with this priest. I'm going to start from the top again. Mm-hmm. This is Micah 2 and 10. It says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with the sword of destruction. Now tell me right now, we're not experiencing the sword of destruction, where where your woman or can leave you and take your children away, or you can't get a job, or you don't have money to pay your bills, or, you, I mean, just anything. Like, just the chief things in life. You know, food, ramen, and clothing. Those are the basic necessities in life that you can't access that without giving your soul away by working 24 hours a day. You see what I'm saying? Now, not a literal 24, but you guys get the gist of it. You're working pretty much your life away. This is what Esau, this is his system that he's created. And y'all want y'all want this shit versus the kingdom of heaven. It says this is not your risk. So if you think you're living your best life, you can't, man. If you look at our women, our women look wore out. Yeah, they, it's a, the scriptures say the saints should be worn out, but the the saints that are worn out are the ones that's doing this work. Like we have to balance being in the world and still doing the work. But y'all just out here twerking everywhere you go. Like you had a group of uh, young females just just start twerking for no reason. You got two of them morbidly obese, under the under five foot three. Like, this is not our risk for you to be that much out of shape with your belly hanging out. Like, you're supposed to be covered <laughs> up, man. Like, and it wasn't just one of them. It was two. And they get out the car twerking. Like, yeah, like, like just, they, it's like a twerk off right off the mu- muscle, you know? <laughs> but like we read previous, what manner of persons are you to be? You're supposed to be in a, 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 you're supposed to have a righteous conduct about yourself. Your conduct should line up as close as possible to these scriptures. That pleases Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. That's right. Um, I'm going to get this last precept, um, unless you have something that you want to bring out on top of it. Uh, you got it right. This is Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Mm-hmm. It says, uh, Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad, and a gift destroy of the heart. Hey, the, 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 coming up, the microcaragma, you know, that grain of rice that goes underneath your skin. What are they going to do? They're going to give you UBI, universal basic income. Mm-hmm. That's going to ultimately destroy you. And that's what Esau Edom is pushing. That's his main. That's one of his main goals. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I believe, like in this precept in Ecclesiastes seven and seven, when you go into that word "mad," it means to make to make to make one to shine, like to make your face shine. And that goes into wisdom. Um, so uh, oppression maketh a wise man to shine, to make him, because we understand what we're going through. You see what I'm saying? We understand. So we're becoming wiser in this oppression because every time, everything that we're going through, we're seeing that we're not supposed to be going through this shit, that this shit is off. The way this life is lived is totally off. So yeah, so you can look at that as mad as angry because we're angry too. And you can use it as, yeah, this oppression is making us wiser, which it is. So we're getting both of them. We're angry and we're uh, 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 becoming wiser in this situation, man, that we're going through. You know, you got some. I'm going to say get Ecclesiastes, I think it's a one in 18. Too much. Uh, yep, I got you. Yeah. 
this is Ecclesiastes 1 and 18. It says, For much wisdom is grief, and he that increases the knowledge increases sorrow. Yeah, so like the brother's going into, the land back of the precept, hey, the, the more we learn, the more we see. The prophets of, of old were called seers. We can see what's going on. We can see how destroyed our people are, man. Our uh, people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Where's that, that knowledge? The knowledge is in these scriptures. That's where the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding comes from. You can see, uh, you can have a clear vision of, of what's going on around you, being circumspect, as the scriptures say in Ephesians. You can see what's going on all around you, all around the world. But that was pretty much right. That's right. Yeah. So, hey, you know, so coming to the, the, the conclusion of this lesson, you have to be in a position where you're really looking at the ways of the world and you're understanding that all this shit about to go away. That's right. And it's about to pass away, going back to the original topic. And the things that you're holding on to are temporal. So where should you be investing your spiritual energy into? You should be investing in me. How about shot? That's right. Because at the end of the day, that's the only salvation we have, man. We ain't got no other way out of this other than how about Shemiah Shai. So unless you have something that anything else, we're gonna go ahead and close out by giving all praise and going honor to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders of the Apostle Great Millstone. To the next time, I can we say Shalom. Shalom.